afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero of Reich, Defender of the Fatherland, off here to an exciting one versus one on Simwaski. We shall be watching Fortune here, fighting for the 12th SS Panzer Division, Hitler Jochen, rolling straight through the American lines, threatening the rear areas, which forces the 5th Infantry Division to sort of form up a hasty battle group to try and deal with that. And uh, Anava fighting here. For the United States, and we are seeing a lot of rear front troops on the way for him, in fact. On the other hand, we got an early Kuberwagen here from Fortune with the Ardennes striped pattern there. Doctrines are infantry, recon support, and armor company. And for Fortune, we've got fortification, scavenge, and the Luftwaffe ground forces. We're rapidly moving ahead with the Stuart Pioneer. Five rear echelons so far <laughs> to be here for Anava. He's going in heavy. I mean, they are cheap. But it's definitely something you see on a more rare basis there. And rear echelon troops were basically, uh, well, basically the sort of words to sort of describe a lot of people who are not usually frontline troops, but were sort of forced into such a situation. Cooks, clerks, and, well, butchers, and so on. Though, of course, I mean, it was actually more common in the German army. Certainly, it happened throughout large parts of the war where basically such units were forced into the front line, usually forming alarm companies. So that way, you sort of deal with whatever threats were usually formed or forced on Germans. So, a little fun fact there, a little fun fact. Anyways, we've got here the Kuberwagen in serious trouble here. A large amount of reaction troops engaging the Kuberwagen from several sides here. We're looking already at six squads, we're doing a bit of suppression here, but at the same time the one in the building, and there you go, the Kuban gets knocked out there by the rapid fire of the M1 carbines there. Stuart and Pioneer is running into further trouble here as well, suffering losses. But they do push off on the rear line units, almost wiping out there with the Sturm Gewehrs, but the carbines do take their toll. Poor Jürgen goes down. And the rear echelons storm forwards. Seven rear echelon units here for Anava. Definitely not your usual American play here. Definitely not the usual. Taking up positions, moving ahead. He could lay down barbed wire or tank traps here and there. If he so fancied. But seven rear echelon squads here. Quite the force versus fortune. He's only got two full grenadiers and a storm pony unit, and he's also getting a mechanized regiment here already to further fight for the Reich. Also, the Dr. Rolson, he's got several defensive rush here and some Jaeger bulletins there, whereas he's pretty much got sort of the box standard in bulletins on the other hand, Mr. Anavar, none of which helps his actual unit composition. Granted, there are very few sort of bulletins for the rear echelon troops, although this one does slightly improve their combat performance, actually. This one rarely seen. Then, theory, it could help benefit Anava maybe just a bit. But more folks are on the way for Fortune to sort of fight the front line troops here, or the rear echelon troops being forced towards the front line here by Anava. Fortune the slowly rolling head, there we go, trading for fuel. I imagine he could try and sort of rush for a flat half track. I mean roll these rear and troops out of flat half track could perhaps prove quite potent. Versus Anavar. And of course Anavar could maybe prepare for that. I mean oh in fact he's going straight for a captain, so seven rear stone troops and then a captain to lead them into battle. Meanwhile though the rear echelons continue leaderless to fight the crowds. To desperately try and hold back here the 12th SS. So named because most of its recruits were primarily drawn from the Hitler Jugend. Little fun fact there. Moving ahead there, we are doing what they can to slow down the German advance. Though Fortune is slowly getting more priority there, in that which case the Volksgrenadiers might have a slightly better chance. There, Cook Steel Hunger Nadi versus these gentlemen. Straight for the window, and kaboom! Jeremy went down with shrapnel embedded into his chest. 
More recent troops hanging around. Here coming to fight again. Still on point swing, but they can here. The two recent troops still bearing down upon them. There we go. Gunther down. Force retreated. Using troops here to do a bit of reinforcement. And we got the captain mobilizing here to the front line. More folks because they'll be up to four folks because once the young pioneer unit, he could soon get the flat half track here if he so wanted. He could of course run in for a puma, but we'll of course see here. Folks has now been engaged here by three rear shots, although in a slightly <laughs> occasionally bad condition. Quick volley fire, quick grenade. On the other hand, they can still suppress while it's active, even if they're moving. In this case, fall back towards the heavy car flat half track is on the way here for for June. And there you go, the folks actually end up getting suppressed here by the rear shot troops. There's some of them are actually in a pretty shabby condition, in fact. Larry there is incredibly low in health. In fact, he could get wiped out, but then again, maybe not. More reason basically converging, and there we go. The captain joining in the fight. Fortune quickly finding themselves overwhelmed. It's a vast horde of brown advances. There you go, the advance. Continues into the center. We did see an attempt to sand back, but sadly, too late. Too late for Fortune. His flag half track, though, is finally done. And the Fortune's here, they're getting a bit forced away. The sheer numbers again, the Vietnam troops makes it a bit difficult to contain them, despite them actually standing out in the open. We should be doing something to make them a bit more vulnerable. There you go. The captain, though, this unit is suffering quite heavily. In fact, the captain himself is dead. Flag half track, they're moving up. There we go, full retreat. Flat half track advances. And of course, what will the response here from Anwar be? I mean, he could rush to capture the back and then rush forward to Stuart Light Tank to try and help here versus Fortune's initial Flieger up there, Schutzen Panzerwagen. I do believe this type in particular was actually a bit more of a minority version. There you go, Scavenge Chosen, Jäger Infantry arrives here. And Rieslons, they're getting pelted by the flat half track. Unit almost swapped out. In fact, there he goes to Light Tank on the way, and he is not supervising with the captain. I would have thought Anima would do that. I mean, again, remember the supervisor ability is quite handy there for the captain. Quite handy indeed. Ready. Quick scouting to Cooper Wagen. Good, good. Black half with two kills. We might soon find himself with a lot less. As the still Light Tank arrives, and looks like we've got an anti tank and all the plus an ambulance here. And I'm getting ready to swarm the field once more. He's also got plenty of munitions, so I mean, a part could be to consider actually upgrading all these re echelons with BAR so that will increase the firepower. I suppose bazookas to help deal with armor vehicles. I don't think Fortune's ready for what's coming next, though. I do not think so. There we go, we got the steward moving up. On the main road here. And that flat half tank, simply put, isn't going to do enough versus that. No matter how much you'd like. And there you go, just swarming forwards. Flat half tank trying to get away. Sadly, Fortune is deeply lacking that tank weapon. He doesn't even have another kid for a single punch trick here to stop the relentless advance here with the Stuart. And there you go, flat half track kaput. A tragic loss right there for Fortune, who was probably not expecting that. At all, otherwise he probably wouldn't place it right that close to the front line and right in the middle of the road in a very defined and ha ha come at me you pesky Amerikanon sort of pose. But we do see a Puma here's a response. Looks like one reaction unit actually did go down here. Jaeger's being forced away, the Stuart firing where there's a 37 millimeter gun. And there you go, a bit of a rear echelon blob, though perhaps not quite as imposing as it otherwise looks like. Though still a bit sad to see such tactics being enabled. And there you go, quick assault. Oh, too late, though. They get a bit much worse. Oh, no! Oh, did a bit of damage there, killing numerous of them. Do not worry, comrades. Our body shall shield us. Well, me from the harm. Maybe not you other guys, but I'm pretty sure I will be shielded. There you go. Fair punch speed back, pull up. He's trying to deal with the steward. There you go, 50 million gun. Alf oh, shoots and misses. Got him in light. Misses again. What are you, Italian? Anyway, steward there taking a hit from the Puma. 
Northern Point being secured by Flutter because we got a bit of harassment down south as well for the Storm Pioneer. Good job here. Wild Fortune is struggling in certain parts. He's trying to that way sort of play against the block, which again, the problem with that kind of thing is again, it's going to have a hard time controlling the map. So Fortune here wisely shifts towards that. There you go, another sort here versus the captain. Oh, building collapse. Almost got the captain, but the captain in this case successfully escaped. There you go, Pumang Head, but there's anti tank gun. Stewart and the captain with dual bazookas. Puma needs to get away. Puma needs to get away. Shaisa. Too late here. Public smoke. The Puma's abandoned. And the Puma went down. Puma went down. Though I'm not sure if it was intentional or what, because it was probably more likely to be able to capture it and drive away with it, which definitely would have caused Fortune quite a bit of sadness. Still, he's managed to secure rest of the map there, so that's a small victory there for Germany. Well, they're certainly starting in there. We go. We are now seeing the US ones here being armed en masse there with BARs, several of them being handed out to the Otherwise, not usually impressive soldiers here. One unit already in two. should consider actually getting reinforced and healed up. Since it to two, they do gain an increased squad sizes, which is definitely quite helpful for them. Another flat craft here on the way. That is definitely rare, but so far, Fortune seems to think another flat craft tank might be worth it. Hopefully, it might turn out to be the case. And he's actually setting up sandbags here. I think he's trying to basically block the bridge at the same time. There's a slight problem here, that's basically the steward can just drive straight through the sandbags and right there while he's setting it up. Now, I'm not entirely sure what thing here, I mean in theory it was nice, but in uh, practice there turned out to be a few issues there. Second Jäger infantry unit arrives, quickly engaging some re echelon troops there. Technically, the only Jaegers that were fighting in the Ardennes, by the way, were SS Jaegers, which were more like Spec Ops troops rather than Jaegers. Part of Scorsini's formation. There goes, second flag, half tech moving up. Rare to see more than one in any battle. They're not complaining, in particular not with that lovely camouflage pattern there. Probably one of my favourites in the entire game. Sturm Pioneer is being forced away. Fultz is taking up those Panzer Shrek, and there we go, opening up there on the Stewart. Several shots going off, the Fultz gun is missed. Ah, scheiße. Flag half tech does a bit of damage here to it, but ultimately does get away rather safely. And the left side is being lost here as the rear launch could be swarm forwards. Though certainly less numerical now to the advantage. We got a fuel cache actually going up here for Anavar. Interesting, interesting. Might be he's playing straight from him. More rear launch troops on the way as well. Definitely very consistent in his strategy. But certainly not what I'm used to seeing. He might also want to get active prioritized vehicles on the anti tank gun. Just the fault there. And we got a record Murphy on the way for Fortune. Not bad, not bad. Still a bit risky, but might have a better chance here versus the Amerikanen. Particularly when they don't have a Sherman. So that could end up working out here. Ready to execute. Sandbag going up here, preparing for an assault. There we go. I mean, he's definitely being very cautious with that. And the steward here almost knocks it out in one go, rather ruining the entire point. Okay, now for the right. And there we go. A quick move here for the fuel point. Bold, bold. Whatever is he going to do about that? He's only can't afford to lose the fuel point as the Oberkommando Vest. Interesting enough, despite Anibal here holding the center village, he's not really doing much to sort of fortify. I mean, he's got tons of reaction which could easily make the job easy. But wire, tank traps, anything to sort of make movement of the enemy sort of difficult. There we go, the Jaegers get a quick kill there on the captain and friends. Ah, except Fritz there. We got the flag after to deal with the reaction on top of the fuel point. 
quickly home now with his two centimeter flak. While the steward continues to remain a threat here. 15 kills so far, Vetri, two. Capture still being held down by Fox because they're moving to final. He has the reversal being head straight between precision here between Fox Gunners and Jaegers. Suffering quite heavy casualties, in particular, the Jaegers can pick off you there with the marksman abilities. Another attempted sandbags. I mean, he's being really aggressive with them. Quite interesting. There you go, Flak after going in. We got the Kedmuff to support this time around. Matko Chancellor versus Stuart. If he can catch at least force it away. Rare to see a Raketen there for nowadays. In particular in a one versus one. So far Fortune seems to be utilizing it partly probably because you can't afford the munitions for the punch of sex. Go moving in. Might want to cover the Raketen there for though. There we go, nice hit on the steward. Nice hit. Oh dear, oh dear, we've got all these reaction troops up here with the BARs and there you go, the crew quickly gets sorted out. I'm not entirely sure if the steward or the reaction that did the job there. They are going to try and recruit it, but straight into the flat half track and that quickly turns ugly. As Jeremy gets turned into a pulp. With his, as his first encounter there with the flat half track. But Fortune sort of cycling back here, holding ground, but steadily struggling a bit here. At the very least, he's sort of trying to drain Anava and all of his re-echelon troops. But at the same time, they are somewhat cheap between force as well. I believe though he's moved his position a bit further forwards. So it's a bit more difficult to sort of drain him that way as well. Still. Moving ahead, and he's back to having six re -echelons. And we've got Shermans now on the way here. That's definitely going to increase the difficulty. We've got Jaeger sprinting forwards. Flat half tech could continue forwards in the game. Might be worried about the anti tank and still dealing with some units on the left flank. Forging this time around, quick to retreat. Got a battle group headquarters up there for Fortune. Nego soon again coming on the fire from the Ked Mirfa. Jaegers are simply getting cut apart here by the Vieslons and all of their BARs, plus the captains probably helping quite a good bit as well. Fortune is in a sticky situation. And there we go, armor arrives here to support the Rudier Echelon Company assembled here for the 5th Infantry. And try and deal, deal here with the 12th SS Assault. So many re troops, so many BARs, and there you go, quick infiltration assault. Grenades flying everywhere. Getting a single kill though, that could have gone better. That could definitely have gone better. And there you go, the Sherman from the flag half tank is about to get a nasty encounter. Another Jaeger unit that arrives. And there you go, opening up on the flag half tank. Sherman goes in, no! Ooh, might be able to get it here, with, but if it's available there, a few pan checks and I can now. Flak flag in placement is opening up. There we go, rockets flying, and there goes Sherman, already down to half health. Jaeger to do what they can here. Stuart though supporting the Sherman. And there you go, just lobbing forward. Jaeger's doing what they can here. Quick grenade assault. No, they can't because they just recently infiltrated, so they need to retreat though. No. Ah, I so they might not make it. Stuart though, Mook, might go down. He might lose the Stuart. Can it happen? Jaeger's down, and the Stuart escapes there. Close to veteran C3. Horrible losses they inflicted. Showing out to deal with these Jaegers reaction men to clear up the anti tank gun. Flag half taking up to try and deal with the horde of the echelons. Fox gun is need to retreat. Scheiße. The only advantage here that Fortune has is again the echelons can't really deal with vehicles at all. They have no anti tank weapon in this get bazookas, and so far it rather looks like he hasn't upgraded that and equipped that on them, so that's something as well. Ready. Of course, they're still the captain, but the captain can be much more rapidly dealt with by the flag half tech, in particular if it's supported reasonably well. Stuart escapes to the south to avoid any further engagements and Kaflavs. There go again, going to the fuel point. Animar keeping up pressures by the Gon Recon support. Could be, may, might be trying to stay up here for the airdrop combat group for some more action. Paratroopers and anti tank guns could work out quite nicely. The rear on troops in the church there having a bit of a hard time holding out. Jaeger's keeping up suppressor for Germany. It's 
A surprisingly durable force that Anavars managed to scramble together. Also does a bit of damage here though. Fortune is slowly sort of getting a grip on things and holding it back. I kind of wish the animal would blob up less. I mean, it rather seems like he's just using this as an excuse to blob up, which is generally less than impressive. Okay, now from a slightly wrong direction there, Stuart, though, man, to get away again. I mean, he could easily afford to spread out and still focus the fire. There's no reason to just sort of blob up. If anything, that only gives the flak half take a better chance of locking it down. You get that academy of two veteran two though it's going to look quite good here for Fortune, as that means well a high rate of fire plus I believe the aim time goes down, which overall means overall it can shoot faster as soon as it sets down. Which is actually one of the major issues of the academy if it does take a bit of time before it can actually begin shooting. Another boom on the way here for Fortune. And Shem there getting heavily repaired. Good thing they're wearing welding gear, otherwise I'm pretty sure someone will be blinded by all those welders at the same point. There we go, Shem coming to fire, and there we go, the for firing. Another shot there, Shem only down to half health. The increase actually playing off good, and there we go, infinite mounting straight into the flak half track. No hanging up, hard time hitting there. Okay, Mev needs to get away though. He's forced him up. There we go. Good job, by the way. He moved it up right next to it, then popped the smoke to ensure the smoke didn't just cover the flat half track. But the Ken Mev as well. Well done there. Well done there. I mean, it is something you can do with that Pantactus as well. You can actually just sort of cover other units nearby using the smoke screen itself. Oh, nice grenade there, taking out a huge chunk of the reaction on troops right there. Puma, Puma, there we go, Pantrax as well, Stuart forced away. And there we go, the Stuart finally goes down. A small victory there for Germany. Germany has to get away, there's not really much to cover otherwise. The anti-tank is, well, waiting there. In fact, the Puma might move straight into this line of fire. Oh, anti-tank gun missed. Might get the Sherman, but needs to be careful. He's going to do it. Oh, no. Second Sherman arrives, and that was clearly not within his plans, and the Puma is knocked out. Both Puma so far. Having had a very short lifetime here for Fortune. We got two of the rear sun squads now up to veterans if free. He's got plenty of munitions though, could definitely consider maybe upgrading some more BARs and some of those men. And that way get them a bit more firepower. I mean there's no reason to float that many munitions. Interesting enough. He's floating manpower, but he's not made any sort of direct use of the airdrop combat group, which I imagine is what I might be trying to save up for. But Sandbag's going up there to provide cover. Good is our bite. Definitely a rather Killer fight here. A okay, Kenmer moving head again, closing in on Veterancy 3, which would give it a first strike bonus with the first rocket. More damage, more penetration. They're actually laying down layers of sandbags here. Intriguing. Not sure why. I suppose it might be to sort of absorb damage from the tanks on the first one. There you go, Sherman moving ahead. A okay, Kenmer for fires. There you go, he could lose the Sherman, he could lose the Sherman. He's moved in a bit too close there. The conditions for movement are terrible. No, gets away. Other Sherman are within range as well. Traverse to a slow. Ah, Sherman gets away there. Oh, no, moves in again, moves in again. And there we go. Shot off. Flak half trick trying to do what can to sort of hold back the American armor. And there you go. Flak half trick just tears into the Horta Vieira Stone, slaughtering numerous of them. Sherman moving in again. And there you go. Veterans free for the Kedmerfa. Sherman trying to get in the kill there. Close to Vector 2, we got Jaegers here moving forwards. Vets 22 already. And a quick cheat there on the Kedenwerfer. Another sledgehammer assault there from Anavar. There with my, much greater damage, his tanks almost knocked out, and several of his rear zone troops certainly salvaged heavy casualties. And certainly, if he gets that Vetri 2, the Kedenwerfer, or flat half track, that's going to make things uglier for his men. Seems going to be a lot more mobile, and there we go, and thus able to respond more ably to any infantry movements. He can pursue better, he can attack better, and can also defend better. So, 
It opens up a lot of options there with Fortune with eventually two flat calf checks. Since again, it sets up much faster. Plus, the gun turns faster as well, which will also make a lot sort of quickly react to things. There we go. Riesel is just getting slaughtered. Fire fry, Dieter. Keep shooting until the screaming stops. And there you go, airdrop combat group in here for Anava. 80 second airborne moving into support. Looks like no trees will be consuming the lives of numerous Americans this time around. That could be wrong. And he's got two bazooka teams right there, that's interesting. Uses only one, but I suppose... Make things like that. Can I be also go there? Okay, she's down here. Jaeger's going to be 4-3. Jaeger scored 3 falls. response to you and Pioneer. Rakettenwerfer for Veteran G2. Veteran G3. Rakettenwerfer for Deutschland. Mission accomplished. Commander abilities ready. Watch for counter attacks. Squad, shut it. We are receiving new orders. Of course, question is what is next here for Fortune of Fl Flak Panzer? Checking up, or is he going to say, I don't know, go for a Yak Panzer 4? There you go, Victor 2 for another oversight. Oh, Jaeger unit, there you go. Looks like setting up for another assault here again. Another sort of very brute force assault. Captain, that seems to be joining in with the airborne for another assault. Different plan, though. So looks like it's being a bit. There you go, Shem Tang head on. Straight into the Kenway, there you go. One bonus shot there, all the way down to half health. And actually getting very close to Victor 4 already. There we go. Increased range. Definitely a good bonus there for the Kenway, which actually makes it very lethal. So you can really sort of get some good shots there. Good quickness assault. Into the advancing American hordes. There goes Sherman coming to fire again. Very close to victory five. And there he goes Sherman knocked out here by the Kenmerfer. Cooked up. Meanwhile, the captain leads the paratroopers in a sudden assault here. Flat half track slowly moving its way towards veterans. Three. And there you go the rear echelon hordes. Fights away as well. There you go, flat half track again opening up. Unleashing a torrent of high explosive shells. A very nice shot there by the Kedden Effort. Rare to see it actually. Even rare to see any kind of veterancy, which definitely has only gotten worse after that last patch. But I mean, if it can actually get some good veterans, that becomes incredibly lethal. In particular, veterans five, it has good range, good rate of fire. Shift your fire when the grenade Plus, that little bonus also makes the first shot extra mean. And there you go, Yak Panther is on the way here for the 12th SS. And he's moving down the flag half track to cover the flank here. I'm not entirely sure if he's fought this one through, since the horde moving against him here, and the force moving again, is heavy on bazookas but at the same time I mean, he should probably be splitting up but even then he should have had some infantry first to screen for the flak half track instead the first thing the flak half track is going to be is going to be the infantry and that's going to be also a lot of bazookas and which might which probably be the last thing it sees captain though in negative cover he got slaughtered almost and right there you go flak half track down had he had even one squad there for example some Jaeger infantry I think he could actually have that flak half track so I'll do some serious cash damage there to Anubar but instead he sent it down on its own and that rather cost of an otherwise good flag half track, that's going to hurt a lot. So I definitely think that could have been done a bit better. But Anubar keeps pushing on again, he's not even trying to sort of split up his attack, attack from slightly different angles. At the same time, just remaining on them, still punishing some forwards. The Kevin afraid to deal with any enemy armor, that gets too close. The heavy cover here, not even done for the false guns, only making them easy to target as the reactions just pour forwards. And there you go though. Panzerfleck on the Sherman and Kenmerfer setting up as well. And there we go, Sherman down to half health. Veteran to five actually. There we go, almost got the Sherman already. Oh, the Kenmerfer though is ultimately forced away there. By the sheer tide, and there we go, we got a Yak Panzer 4 rhyming here for Fortune. Which then proceeds to drive straight past the reaction on since there's nothing to worry about there. Yeah, against the meanwhile, ganging up here on the Paratroops a bit of a blob there as well from Fortune. I'd like to see less of that, but certainly they are a bit lacking issues there in sort of for the Orbicon rest and dealing with the blobs. Anyway, Sherman here being dealt with by the Yak Panzer. Flak Panzer all on the way. And 
and there he goes. Smoke screen late down by the show, but it's too late and it's up. Oh, exploding straight in the smoke. And Tatank and Phil to penetrate the front arm of the Yacht Panzer. And there we go. Petra was forced away. Fortune holding on here though. Oh, mine went off. They're almost wiping up the entire paratrooper unit. He might get the last one there as well. Direct hit! Direct hit! Salvaging that there for some fuel and munitions. Gute Arbeit, Leute. Animar beginning to struggle a bit here versus the whole versus Fortune. This horde's beginning to fault a bit here. And then also a paratrooper squad like that definitely hurt Anavar as well. That does mean the flat panzer can be careless here. A few good bazooka shots could send it straight to hell. And of course the question is what will Fortune do next after this? You also need to get a kid of bat on the front line. Victory points not good. Oh, by the way, time for the mid game analysis. A bit delayed there, but current situation is things have mellowed out here a bit. Anava has taken some losses. He's bled out a bit, though, still with the rear stun troops. He's able to sort of keep up the pressure. He's also got BARs. He's got plenty of missions, though, for a lot more BARs. I definitely think he should do that. I mean, if he's going for it, I mean, he might as well just go full in. I mean, no reason is else to do it half arsed. In particular, there's not really much else with this doctrine he can use the munitions for unless he gets some pathfinders and begin calling down artillery at nauseam. So that would, of course, be one way there. I mean, if Jackson's definitely going to help with the Yak Pads before on the Ostwind, more Shermans, that would also be a good move in the longer run there for Anavar. And maybe a single Greyhound, but otherwise, the pathfinders would be a good move there. For Fortune, he needs to sort of keep up there, he needs to keep harassing, keep sort of trying to sort of make him forced to spread out the variation of troops alone then make it easier to knock them out keep up the pressure consider some booby traps there with his Jaeger infantry here and there and consider taking up and maybe aim for I don't know a Sturm Panzer 4 or Sturm Tiger I mean could be a good move maybe or I suppose he could be a bit bold and try and play for a King Tiger he might have the force that can basically play for that in particular with the veteran to find with Ken there he actually if he can keep it safely guarded he has very little to worry about from enemy armor since again, it can actually tear away through quickly through most medium tanks, and even the Jackson has to be well, the Jackson in particular has to be seriously careful around it. So it's actually pretty good. He just needs to keep it properly guarded. Plus, the Yacht Panzer IV does sort of serve as a nice core there alongside the Flak Panzer, so it's not all bad. Though, one of course has to question if the Yacht Panzer IV really was necessary. In fact, he could probably, if he didn't go, go on for it, he could probably go on straight for a Sphere Panzer at quarters and a Panther instead, which probably would have served as a better choice. But there you go. There you go. In terms of damage, Fortune's head. In terms of kills, slightly less ahead, but still ahead there. Still ahead. Apparently, the Yacht Panzer was a team killer already. Who would have thought? And a bit of a tragic start just there for the Puma as Meat Shield. But back to the fight here. Back to the fight. No, dear Paratrooper, we need to be careful. Grenades hold in there. And the church collapses. The Paratroopers. Enshrined within. Into the going forwards here. We have no troops there fighting. As the forces move ahead. A bit of volume fire there, but instead all the grenades that rather cause a problem. And a huge sea of explosion appears. Some very nasty engagements there over the center. Definitely not very usual to see something like that. Well, again, I'm surprised that he's not just going full in and just upgrading every single reaction troops with double BARs. I mean, that would give him notice more firepower and try to make things more miserable for Fortune as well. That Panzer IV rolling here. It's not really too much. I mean, he got one kill, but that's about it. No roll beyond that, he's not really going to do much for the fight. Very close to victory 4 there for those Jaegers. 
which would increase the range of the weapons overall, making them much more helpful in a fight, also allowing them to stay a bit more at a safer range, if you will. Once more, Captain Tom's rear hold advances. Black Panther at the front line. Black Panther covering, and so is the Raketenwerfer. Is Werf die Raketen? Bit of a lot of action there from the echelons. Interesting enough, he's not actually making that much use of his doctor, Mr. Anavar. Again, I think some pathfinders could help. Again, he's got tons of munitions, so I mean, that could be an option as well, just basically calling down here and there. Schwerer the Panzer quarters up. So, of course, question is what will Fortune aim for next? There you go, Flak Panzer senses some targets, advances, Jaeger supporting, screening, good. And there you go, the rear slots are quickly forced away while the wall gets shattered there. There you go, Flak Panzer coming fire there from the Jackson. Another hit almost down Yak Panzer advances. Jaeger's doing what the candidate to do with the Riesland units. And there we go, Veteran C4. Veteran C4. Sounds like something went kaboom. Captain there taking some nasty losses. There we go, he's charging in the false gun. He's Veteran C5. Straight here while the infantry occupied, he's going straight in there for after the Jackson. You do see a bit of sort of oh god the ambulance nicely done there. But now they're all back, and that rather makes things a bit difficult here for the false grenadiers, as now they're faced with a lot of brownings again. So I still think he could try and do more to increase the firepower and again upgrade them more solidly. I mean, most of the units only have one BAR when they easily could have two. That would do a lot for him. Now we actually got bazookas here being researched and handed out to some of the men instead. And you got the fuel pond covered here by the spear pants at the quarters. The echelons are minded, they are merely re echelons. They're not super soldiers. But they are not US Rangers. There you go, flat pants around the infantry. There you go, in this case, the cover turns against him. That's the re echelons. Gladly help themselves to it. Jackson moves in though. Hit there on the flat panzer. Jack Panzer opens up in the other hand. Looks like he's sending the up there. Got all ah both miss. And tank gun though should use armor piercing rounds. Armor piercing rounds to increase penetration. And of ah misses again though. Incredible. They just keep on missing. Scheiße. Another ambulance arrives. Squad, shut it. We are a unit ready. And there you go, he actually managed to steal away the fuel point from his opponent. Nicely done. And a fourth Jaeger unit here for Fortune. Jaeger, listen up. Intriguing. And the Appan's form moves up the incredibly blackened right side of the church here. Crew, get ready. There we go. Jackson under fire here. And oh! Almost got it. Almost got it! Jaeger's on the other hand, caught here by the swarm. And there you go, quick grenade assault over the hedge. None of them, though, really connect. On the other hand, they encounter the Flak Panzer here, which is much better getting off some kills there. The Foxes might get wiped out, actually. Careful, Fortune, careful. Do not underestimate the blob here. Another infantry sort of sorts from the south. 
including the match before. We've even got the Arc Panzer moving into support here now. Might be fortunate him trying to move and deal with it. Or finish it off. More grenades will be needed. He should need to try to have to protect the better. And there we go. Grenades on the ambulance of all things. More veterans here on the Aegis. One unit hit closing in on veterans who five. So Osman also moving in. Coming under five with an anti tank gun. He should use take aim, but also the armor piercing rounds. Come on, Anavar. Use armor piercing rounds here. And that, oh no. Might not matter here. The Jackson's close to getting it. Jackson's close to getting it. And there we go. Flak Panzer kaput. Yak Panzer moving into flank. Anti tank gun there firing. Still no armor piercing rounds. Still no take aim. Come on, Anavar. Make use of that ability for the rear slums that have suffered heavily here. The field here covered in dead Americans and a few Germans. And of our strategy though is beginning to show some rather serious gaps in it besides the blobbing. As it is a strategy that rather lies, I think, a bit on shock effect, and once you sort of get accustomed to it and sort of deal with it, it begins losing a lot of its power, and that is what we're rather seeing here as Fortune is sort of being in more and more handily taking it down. Although, in response, his tactics have in themselves gone a bit down as well to sort of try and deal with it. But we're seeing a third flag half tackle on him this time in the game, that is definitely unique. I'm just going to speed this up ever so slightly. We've got another air. And again, dual bazookas. That's. I mean, you usually see a bit of a mix there, but so far, Anibal's all he's got is bazookas. Just bazookas. And there you go. Booby traps going up. Flat half taking up to support. Taylor Ken have idea as well. Flat half tech waiting behind the hedgerows, or well, what remains of the cemetery hedgerows. Jackson needs to be careful here. For that Kenneth around. Head on assault here. Looks like he was worried about another grenade assault, causing a swift retreat there from Anavar. Though so far there seems to be none of that. The assault continues once we're going straight here for the heart of Anavar's positions. You see getting plastered with rockets and other nasty things, grenades going left and right. Not really landing any hits there though. In the end though, Fortune's infantry assault is once more defeated. Fortune though is rather dominant in the center. Victory points are still not in his favor though. And he could go for a Panther right now, he could go for a Storm Tiger, I suppose we want to basically sort of feel rather more confident in things. He could try and aim for a King Tiger, the Koenig's Tiger. It would be about five minutes before we can get that, maybe four. Actually, four probably is closer. Before we can get that with the amount of fuel he gets at the moment. There you go, Veteran to five, Jaeger, 37 kills. 36, I mean. Bet 25, Ritter Kreuztrager. And there you go. He's acting against a puff and he's got tons of munitions. Come on, Anavar, make use of your resources kindly. Make use of your resources kindly. The full use of them. We start to see now he's beginning to suffer some a rather acute manpower drain again. His strategy is beginning to basically sort of lose steam here in front of Fortune's counter strategy. In particular, the amount of Jaegers are quickly turning into a mess for him. Salvaging equipment right in front of Anavar. Bit bold here, bit bold. In this case, not quite working out for him. Ready for 
Very intent then getting the fuel cache away from Anima, and there we go. We got aerial reconnaissance going. We got the INR Pathfinders moving in. You're getting very close to that King Tiger. Very close. And there you go, a two strike right there. I don't think that was very worth it. And there you go, in fact, we see the response is a quick sprint there from Fortune. So that could have maybe happened a bit better there. Small attempt there with the Fox to flank in, but the assaults are not very pleasant there for the Fox Grenadiers. And the result is a very swift retreat. They're not entirely sure what Fortune was expecting. Maybe a bit of light harassment, who knows? Yak Panda Force basically done nothing for quite a bit of a fight now. One kill and one level of veterans in spite of having been out for quite some time. Oh, Jaeger's got murdered. He's got the flag half here trying to fight through the cover, but oh, the Hetris was not quite working out there. Bazooka shots going off a chemical force where Yak Panda falling back. We got the Orbus, or oh, Jaeger's trying to cover. And there we go, Koenig Sieg on the way to support the 12th SS. And there we go, Perich getting plastered there by the flak half track. 37 kills now, finally on the Jaegers. So they can at least be somewhat right there. But almost getting wiped out in the process. And while Fortune has a smaller force in the other hand, it's fully veteran. In terms of infantry, anyways, largely. And yes. The Storm Pioneers, as usual, are the ones that struggle getting anywhere with the veterancy on the other hand. Being rather slow about it. Another bit of air reconnaissance. There you go, Jackson Holmes out there using a bit of combined of air reconnaissance. But there you go, Yak Panzer 4 fires back. Nice shot there though, with armor piercing rounds on top of everything. Empty the getting hammered there by the high close rounds of the flat half track. So the fight has also largely basically settled in towards here. Fortune basically sort of wants out, they can't really pull off any fancy maneuvers, and overall he just needs to sort of drain the life out of this. And of course, Anima, the way he plays, is just going to resort to those. Brutish assault there, nothing tactically fancy or in, in that regard. I mean, strategically interesting, but again, it's as the battle goes on, it's beginning to show some rather large flaws. And now I do believe the time has come to put the jack boots on and put him to rest. As the King Tiger has mobilized, and Anavar, for all intents and purposes, not quite prepared for that. He's got a single anti tank gun ready. And we also, of course, he hasn't been really good at using the anti-tank gun's abilities at all, in particular not the armor-piercing round which dollars could have done quite a bit of damage to Fortune. So King Tiger mobilized there, usually they are what were equipping the heavy tank battalions by late 1944-45, Tigers really not being well used here and there as well, but primarily was the King Tigers really taking up the spot there. This high velocity 88mm gun, in this case it's Series 2 turret. That's the first one, while the Hatsum designed floors. There you go, firing away, and there you go, hitting the INR Pathfinders and some other fellows. And again, now here, really him clumping up, which is going to be dangerous as they only get mixed easier with the King Tiger. Anti tank of firing, but still, well, in this case, there was no time for the armor piercing rounds at all. King Tiger rolls forward. Like the Krupp Steel Behemoth, it is. And there goes shots going on. He's the armor piercing right there up. The girl's got the outpants of supporting gaining battery too. We just need to fight. There we go. And the infantry clumped up. I mean, he's only making it easy here. Grenades going off. Just utter carnage. Bits of Larry and Barry all over the place. And a bit of Hugh. And there you go. Just getting massacred. Nothing short here of massacred. Yak Pan, or oh, Jackson down here, Yak Pan's actually scored a kill there. And there you go, looks like Anavar quit the game. 
game over here. Definitely not your usual fight. Definitely not your usual fight. In particular, the high amount of blopping and in particular reaction on blopping. Again, that's also partly why Chant Shirt and also partly Shirt can be defeated. But I mean, it was certainly a good response there. Fortune made it shifting his strategy away until he had the forces to sort of really deal with it. He basically shifted away, began focusing on the territories elsewhere, knowing that the blob would have to sort of shift towards that. And again, they could move in there. So, some good moves there. Good use of the flak half jack. So, again, it rather well, messed it up right down here, I feel like. King Tiger was a nice, I suppose, finishing choice there. Good use of the Jaeger infantry as well. Good use of grenades. I would have seen, liked to see a little less blobbing, though, from Fortune as well here and there. But uh, I mean, it wasn't quite on the scale that. Anavar did it, and definitely think Anavar ended up flowing too many resources, in particular munitions again. He could easily equip a lot more men with BAR, so why he did not choose to do, or choose to do so is a bit beyond me. Though I also think things might have been a bit different had he not just had only bazookas on his paratroopers dropped down, but he could easily have more BARs in the end. A lot of them basically dropped all over the place like they're candies from a rather fleshy American piñata. But good use of the infiltration grenades, Jaeger infantry, scavenge. The flat calf I mean, three flat calf tracks in a fight is definitely a bit of a rarity there. And the Academy of here also turned out to be quite a vital part, gaining only one kill but still doing tons of damage there to the American armor and definitely forcing Anabar to be a lot more cautious with his tanks. So I think that rather covers it overall. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you gave some ideas for your matches. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? Share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in a replay and write some feedback in the comments. And if you'd like to support the Propaganda Cast, consider donating. There's a link in the video description via PayPal where you can do so. That would be most appreciated if you were to consider donating. It would make me very happy. So please do if you'd like. Otherwise, thank you all and see you tomorrow. Bye.